Are you considering becoming an ecologist, but you're not quite sure how to get there? Well, come with me as I outline my 10 steps to becoming an ecologist today. So presumably, since you want to become an ecologist, you have an interest in nature, you want to save the world and have a passion for conservation. This isn't always the case in the ecology though. While most of us want to work in those areas, we have to be realistic and there are many different areas of ecology that an ecologist can work in. Sure, there are field ecologists who go out and do surveys every day, but there are also report writing ecologists, researching ecologists, as well as statistical analysis ecologists. And each one of these have their own particular role and to get into them you have to have an interest in it. So even though you have an interest in becoming an ecologist, I think the important part is for step one is to see where you want to be at the end of say going to college and getting your ecology degree. I'll go into it a bit more later on but do you want to be a researcher? Do you want to be out there doing field surveys every day or do you want to be looking at statistical analysis? This is really important to figure out. Um, working backwards from your end goal is really important. Not just in trying to figure out where you want to be as an ecologist, but in a lot of things in life. Ecology is all about the study of how organisms interact with each other. So even though you might love animals, you mightn't love the idea of sitting down and figuring out how animal X interacts with plant Y and this sort of thing, which is why Maybe an ecologist isn't the role you want to be. Maybe you want to be a wildlife biologist. Maybe you want to be a zoologist. And again, that kind of ties back into with step one in that you have to figure out where you want to be in the end to become an ecologist. Now, ecology is incredibly broad. So regardless of what you actually want to do, getting an undergrad in ecology is key. The point here really is that not that you want to become involved in wildlife biology or conservation is that you specifically want to be an ecologist and look at how in organisms interact with each other. But I would say that even if you don't know for sure you want to become an ecologist, having a generic ecology degree as your undergrad is a very good basis and then you could specialize more in your masters. Again, this will be covered a bit further down the list. So I suppose this point is more for younger people who are just getting into ecology or thinking about going into college and doing ecology degrees. And this is make use of your time in secondary school and high school or whatever your country calls it and just go for it. Like your biology courses, they may not be entirely ecology, but some they all will have to have a section of ecology in them. So make use of that time. Do your field work in ecology well. And if like me, you found, oh, this is the most enjoyable part of biology, then you're more than likely suited for an ecology role or wildlife biology or zoology roles. I suppose if you're an older student going into college trying to, you know, you've tried something that hasn't worked out and you want to be an ecologist now, and that's totally fine. There are loads of people I know who've gone into ecology quite late in life. And I would say that, you look, you probably already know that you want to become an ecologist. You've had it in your head. You want to change degrees and this is what you want to do now. But if you're not entirely sure, there are plenty of volunteer organizations even just around your local town or city that will give you an introduction into ecology and wildlife and even conservation. And while it might not be, you know, hiking up mountains, doing site surveys, it is quite good at getting you an introduction and seeing if you like it. So I suppose in summary for everyone, get a feel for ecology, get a feel for what it's like. What do you like about ecology, about the work that you want to do? Again, Going back to point two, it's about seeing your end goal and how to get there. So when selecting an institution, college or university, what should you pick? What ecology degree should you go for? Now, for me personally, there wasn't too many choices. I had to stay local in Cork. And so I had an option of two pretty much. And I went for the university route. Now, I will get into it a bit further down, but it is sort of agreed on that universities tend to be more for researchers. Now, don't get me wrong, there are a lot of ecologists who go to university, get their degree and become, you know, field ecologists. But the university experience is tailored to getting you into a degree and getting you out of it as a researcher and then they'll hopefully hire you. 
That's essentially the pathway of the ecology degrees in universities, which is perfectly fine if that's where you want to go down, but I didn't, I wanted to become a field ecologist. So like I said, if you can have the luxury of picking any course you want, go to the syllabus, have a look, see which modules they're teaching in over the four years, and pick one that you like. But really, at the end of the day, your undergraduate ecology degree, your wildlife biology, your zoology degree, and where you got it from doesn't really matter as long as you did somewhat well in it, as long as you got a 2-2, two, 2-1, two, two, you know, somewhat 50%, 60% plus in the UK and Ireland at least. I know in America they're really high standards with their education, but I don't think it really matters in ecology too much. Once you know the basics, once you can do the work, that's the main thing. So it doesn't matter too much, in my opinion, where you get your degree from, once you're dedicated and you're able to put in the work. So don't stress too much about, oh, I really want to go here, but it costs so much more money than going here. Go to the place that you can afford to go to or that you like to go to. And that's the main thing about ecology. You have to enjoy it. So during your undergrad and your Bachelor of Science in Ecology, you should have a lot of opportunities to try different areas in ecology. And you will also probably get an introduction into zoology and plant science and a rake of other things, including like genetics and maybe even geology, which are all great and they will completely stand to you in your future. So I guess my number one point in doing your undergrad is pay attention. Not every module will be interesting. Not every module will be suited to you. And this is okay. It's not meant to. It's like undergrad is meant to give you a general introduction into the whole field of ecology and everything else you're studying. Within two years of doing your undergrad, you might have discovered that you no longer want to be a field ecologist. You might love doing research. You might just, you know, sitting down, reading a scientific paper and getting information from that and using that information is your passion. You just love it. It's, it just really clicks for you. And that's perfectly fine. There are plenty of opportunities out there for you with that specific role. But on the other hand, you might decide that you absolutely hate doing research. And that's, again, fine. Although you will probably need to do some levels of research as an ecologist, just like a research ecologist will need to have some field experience. But that's the beauty of doing an undergrad. You get to figure out what you like and what you don't like. And this is why I'm saying spend the first two or three years figuring out what you like and what you don't like. And this will absolutely stand to you in your final year and doing your thesis. Be it in your undergrad or in your masters or even outside of the university altogether, depending on how good your university is, a very important skill to have as an ecologist, as any ecologist, is knowing how to use geographical information systems or GIS. I can pretty much say without <clears throat> I can pretty much say without doubt that no matter what job you will do in ecology, you will need to use GIS at some point and knowing even the basics will help you a long way. And most jobs will put down having experience in using GIS as a minimum requirement. One of the main tips I can give to anyone doing an ecology undergraduate degree is to try and get volunteer work while you're in college. So not volunteering as a barista or whatever, but after school, after college, get out there and do some field work. Now this can purely be during the summer months. Just get out there and do three months of summer work, say between third and fourth year, and this will absolutely stand you. So going into your final year of your undergrad, hopefully you have figured out what it is you want to be as an ecologist. And even if you haven't, this is still okay. You still have loads of time. And to be honest, even the job offers you get and apply for after college can really influence where you want to go afterwards. But if you have paid attention to your modules and what you really like, and you went on work placement and you figured out what you want and what you love to do in ecology, then this in your final year is where you need to hone those skills. Whether you want to do like genetic analysis, whether you want to get into statistical analysis, field work, or even bird surveys or anything at all. This is your time to use your supervisors and your lecturers to help you hone your skills into what you want to be afterwards. And these steps are for after you've finished your undergrad degree, you're thinking about doing a master. A master's in ecology can be very beneficial for you and can help you get better jobs, but it is very important to note that you do not need a master's to become an ecologist. There are plenty of ecologists I know out there 
who are working as ecologists without a master's in ecology. But again, this very much depends on what sort of an ecologist you want to be. An outdoor ecologist or a terrestrial ecologist can easily get work as a field surveyor without a master's degree. I would say most ecologists probably do end up getting their master's degree, be it at the very start of their careers or maybe five or 10 years into their careers. Most of them will opt to get a master's degree at some point. And if you do opt to go for your master's degree, one thing, <clears throat> And if you do opt to go for a master's degree, one piece of advice I would give you there is to do it in a different university if possible, because this will give you a complete different range of lecturers to talk to, maybe even a different area to specialize in, but also it takes you out of your comfort zone. And being out of your comfort zone as an ecologist or as an academic is very important at times actually, because once you get comfortable in anything, it's very hard to have an open mind about other things. And as an ecologist, or even as a scientist, you need to have an open mind. And finally, networking is probably the second most important tool an ecologist can have, as any scientist can have, and probably as any human can have. Because we as humans, we rely on each other for a lot of things. We like to be independent, we like to do everything ourselves, but you have to have a way in. And a lot of career opportunities and things in life come from knowing someone who knows something. The point is, ecology is so broad and everyone, speci everyone likes to specialize at least in something. They find something they really like, they really enjoy, and they hone in on that. And ecology gives you the ability to do that. But this is where networking is really important because you might be, for example, surveying somewhere and you know you know your basic plants, whatever, but there's some really specific plants. There's this really specific grass here that you don't know, but it is absolutely, utterly important that you need to know what it is for the specific project. Now, while you may not know a grass specialist off the top of your head that you can reach out to on say Twitter or WhatsApp, you'll know someone who will know someone. So this is why networking is incredibly important, especially in ecology. So in summary, what you need to do to begin an ecologist is have a passion in ecology, really like how animals and plants interact with each other and other organisms too. Know how to use GIS, get plenty of volunteer experience, do an undergrad degree at minimum, contemplate doing a master's, but figure out what you want to do. Figure out where you want to be as an ecologist at the end. Do you want to be a wildlife ranger? Do you want to be a head of an ecological firm doing consultancy work? Do you want to just do fields or work surveys all the time or research? Have that in mind, figure out what you want to do. And then try to volunteer if possible. Learn GIS. GIS is an incredibly important tool which will stand to you in ecology and a lot of other jobs as well that are very similarly related. Do a lot of networking, get a lot of people you know who are interested in it and get together. Even just send out invites on LinkedIn or whatever and send messages. I wouldn't really recommend it, but if you've met them once or twice, then it's a good way of getting their contact details without asking someone for their phone number, which again is kind of acceptable as well. And I guess just the main thing is figure out what you want to be. What do you have an interest in and go with it. Because if you love something and you have a real passion for it, it will make everything else worthwhile in getting there. Because no one is in ecology for the money. Because the money in ecology is terrible. And I think that will do for today's video of how to become an ecologist. And if you have any questions, please leave them down below. And um, yeah, we'll catch you all next time.